today we gonna discuss cisco switch yesterday we discuss about cisco router actually cisco switch is a network device which connect multiple computer inside lan and also we use a switch in data center as well for multiple connectivity multiple device connectivity in the same network normally we use them when we connect multiple devices in the same network i'm talking specially about the layer 2 switch so basically layer 2 switch work on data link layer of osi model and we call them layer 2 switch however there is layer 3 switches as well which we call them multi layer switches these multi layer switch working multiple layer on layer 3 like a router on network layer and layer 2 and data link layer as well so that's why we call them multi layer switches so there are two type of switches layer 2 Paverly and layer 3 and we use to connect them different devices multiple devices such as pc laptop printer fix machine access point phone voice over ip phone server so for connectivity we are using cisco switches the basic functionality of network switches to forward layer 2 packet or frame because switches is working based on ethernet frame from source to destination while network use packet while switches work and forward the frame router work on layer 3 switches work on layer 2 and layer 3 router work on osi model and network layer while switch work layer 3 switches work on layer 3 or network layer and also work on data link layer we use router to connect different network and we use switches to connect same network and switches are the key component of many business network today you will find these switches everywhere from your home to enterprise network and we use them for efficiency for smooth connectivity to share the resources these layer 2 and layer 3 switches can be managed locally or remotely locally through console and also you can configure telnet ssh and all those things to connect them remotely i told you in last lecture you can configure svi and layer 2 to for management purpose to access this switch remotely through ssh or telnet so now we know what is a switch and the basic functionality of a cisco switch switch forward the frame based on mac addresses which we will discuss the operating system which is used inside the switch is similar like a router so yesterday we discussed many operating systems such as ios enter network operating system so it's almost similar concept in cisco switches as well this is the basic picture of any cisco switch even though different series of switches has different but however you will find there is port it can be ethernet port there can be gig interface there can be 10 gig there can be fast ethernet and there can be saps to use sap to connect there should be console port and there should be usb port and management port and sap's module slot as well and this switch there is only one but it can be many and there can be more density of interfaces like this one maybe this is 24 port of switch but there can be many port because in data center they have many other port and more port but this is the basic one because this is the catalyst 2960 series switch screenshot other switches may different and it should be different so now we know the basic switch now coming to the operating system which is ios internet network operating system similar like in 
routers we have operating system inside these switches and router as well and we discussed yesterday that operating system interact with the hardware and is providing us environment such as the window operating system so similar in these switches we have ios enter network operating system and we have different type of ios which we will discuss a bit later but these operating system can be configured through cli command line interface and these switches and we can access this cli locally through console or remotely through telnet or ssh and this operating system usually store inside the router flash memory from where when you start it will boot up to the ram and then you can use this operating system and you can work on these switches so this is the old uh, operating system inside the switch and you can find by the command show version so if i go to any switch let me go to this switch and see which type of operating system this switch has so show version and here you can see this is cisco ios enter network operating system so this one is the uh, ios uh, switch which we are talking enter network operating system ios the old model of uh, operating system however we have nexus operating system as well cisco introduced this one specially for data center switches which is the nexus operating system so if i have a nexus switch let me open this nexus uh, switch and okay it's going to the boot so we need to restart this one so this nexus switch you will find uh, another type of operating system which we saw yesterday as well and it's very powerful as compared to the old ios operating system and this nexus operating system is for fabric channel storage area network switches made by cisco switches and especially we use these switches inside the data center as i told you there are many operating system which we discuss in the router section as well and here as well there is other operating system such as cat os catalyst operating system Cisco iOS XR and Cisco iOS XE and Cisco iOS SX and many more which we saw yesterday in the router section as well there is a Nexus there is XE and there is iOS and there is XR same operating system are in these switches as well and you can easily find out by show version command so this one is cisco nexus operating system operating system os and show version this one is xe which we saw yesterday as well now coming to a catalyst switch sometime you will heard this word when you go to your real world and your organization that this is a catalyst switch basically catalyst was a company which produced switches and which was bought by cisco that company name was catalyst and they produced those switches with the name catalyst operating system there was catalyst operating system inside those switches and those switches example are 2960 series and 45 series and 65 series of switches so when cisco bought this company so they give those devices name catalyst switch and it famous by this name catalyst switches so basically because these catalyst switches was produced by catalyst company and this company was bought by cisco so now the name is catalyst switch so if you heard about this one so basically they are talking about those series of switches which is produced by catalyst company and which brought uh, let run by cisco now as i told you there is another type of switches nexus switches very powerful switches and it is made for a data center 
in every data center you will see these type of switches the command are different from ios which we normally see this one is the nexus operating system and you will find most of the command different however the concept are similar and there is many type of nexus switches such as 9500 series 9500ex and 9300 and 9200 series of nexus switches and you can find in data sheet as well so if you type 9300 our uh, data sheet so you will find the information about cisco this one and you can find out about the uh, 9.3 nexus switches as well and when you click here so you will find more information as i told you you can always come to this one and you can find more detail about in data sheet about any uh, switch or router so this is the product detail nexus switches this the way it is the inside this is the outside this is the speed and density and connectivity buffering licensing and all the information you can easily find out by a typing in google and data sheet so you will uh, see more detail so these are the uh, specific and specially made switches for data center with more density look at a lot of connectivity you can use them then another type of switches is modular switches modular switches let you add expansion module into the switches as you need so it's give you a flexibility whenever you need to change something so you can easily remove the slot and you can add the slot you can add additional interfaces you can add power supply you can add cooling fans and you can remove those expansion and you can add more expansion so those type of switches are called modular switches so suppose i want to remove this fan you can remove and you can plug another fan or maybe power supplies or maybe cooling fan or maybe additional interfaces here so these type of switches are called modular switches while another type of switches is fixed switches which is fixed number of port and it not extensive expendable expendable but you cannot add anything extra you cannot remove something like in the previous one you can add interfaces the additional interfaces no and fixed switches it is fixed fixed number of port fixed everything and you cannot change anything you cannot modify anything so their type of switches is called fixed switches then another type of switches is stand alone switch stand alone switches need to be configured and managed individually and it has to be troubleshoot individually so it's a single device so if you have a stand alone switches every switch has to be configured separately and managed separately separate cdp separate stp separate vtp separate ssh separate everything while the opposite of this one is stackable switches stackable technology make stack of physical switches and act, act like a one switch so it will combine many switches and it will be like a one switch so it means you need to manage many switches as a one but e these are the special type of switches not every switch can be stackable you need to plug the cable behind them like this one and you can make them stackable so it will combine them so it when they combine them it will be like a one switch it means these switches taking as stp cdp vtp ssh it will be like a one switch so logically it will be one switch so it provide you more density increase more port and give you more connectivity and it combine many switches and you just need to configure one switch like a one so stackable switch logically become one switch and everywhere you will see such type of switches for access layer switches 
because it gi give you more density and also it's a good idea that you have many switches but it work like a one so you don't need to configure individually like this one now coming to layer 2 switch there are two type of switches one is layer 2 switch which is purely work on layer 2 and it's work based on media access control address layer we call them make address and it work on layer 2 or data link of OSI reference model purely work based on make addresses from source to destination it will forward the packet based on make address lookup we call them layer 2 while there is layer 3 or multi layer switches as well now you can configure routing you can do whatever you can do in the router most of the thing of the router you can do in the switches such as routing protocol OSPF, BGP, EIGRP routing static default route you can configure them in multi layer switches as well access list so you can do the same thing in these layer 3 switches which is work like a router as well so that's why we call them multi layer switch and also providing you connectivity more density because in the router there may be maximum three or four ports while in this multi layer switch they can give you more density and also the routing functionality so that's why you may see many organization you may see multi layer switches in data center so we call them layer 3 or multi layer switches now there is unmanaged switches as well unmanaged network switches is designed simply plug them and use them you don't need to change anything they are shipped with fixed configuration and you are not allowed to change any configuration and neither it require any configuration and management and these switches are for basic connectivity at your home or in a small office or maybe for your desk or maybe for your lab either maybe for your conference room etc the main difference between unmanaged and managed switch the ability to configuration now the managed switches give you greater security and more feature managed switches provide you all the feature which is not available in unmanaged switches managed switches provide the ability to configure them to manage them to monitor them to create something to create vlan inside to change something to secure them and it providing you advanced feature to control the traffic as well and it's up to you whatever you want to do inside those switches so we call them manage switches you will find these in enterprise networks such as the nexus switches and all those are managed switch so this is the manage and unmanage switches now we will see this one separately that how switch work each network card is a unique identifier we call them mac address which we discuss and whenever these devices are connected to this switch so based on this mac address this switch will forward the packet and it will store the mac address in cam table we call them cam table content addressable memory or we call them mac address table they will store those information the port detail the vlan detail and mac addresses and based on those they will forward the packet which we will see in the next videos finally and the Cisco switches you need to configure switch virtual interface SVI we call them SVI switch virtual interface basically it's a logical interface on layer 2 and layer 3 switch and normally you will find them in layer 2 and layer 3 switches why we need you can configure this SVI in layer 2 switches for management purpose because how you will access layer 2 switch remotely through SSH and Telnet you need an IP address you cannot go to data center all the time to plug the console port so for that purpose in layer 2 switch just create SVI assign the IP and 
this is your management SVI and you can access that switch. So it is good for both for SVI can be for layer two and also for layer three. So SVI can be create in layer two switches for management and testing purpose while it can be create in layer three as well in L3 either in layer three or in multi layer switch we create SVI for inter VLAN communication. Also, we create this SVI for routing to communicate with each other. And also you can use them for management as well and for routing services as well and layer three switches. So SVI, you will find them and you need them every time in layer two and also in layer three as well. Now coming to the memory. As we discussed the same thing in router, so the memory are in the switches as well. There is a ROM, read only memory. We call them a permanent memory. And this ROM is used to store bootstrap program. It's like a mini iOS diagnostic application. Bootstrap program is loaded when the device first power on. And it is used to find out iOS image and manage the process of loading iOS into the RAM. So this is the job of ROM. Now coming to random access memory. Random access memory is called, well a tile memory means it's random memory. Routing table, ARP cache, running configuration, iOS loaded in the RAM. And this type of memory loss it content when the device lose power when the device reboot so everything will be lost we know this one we also use in laptop as well and there is another memory nvram nvram is random access memory which is a permanent memory not a permanent like the rom one but you can store your detail there like a startup configuration are there when you want when your device boot up so still the configuration will be there and finally, we have a flash memory, which is a permanent memory like a NVRAM and the operating system are stored in this flash memory. It's like a hard drive in our system. And I told you in the router as well, there is different size of memory, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512 memory, 512 MB. These are the memory where the operating system is stored. And how you can find out this? by show version so if i go to any switch and if i type show version so it will show you all the information about these rams so if i type show version so if you go down so here is uh, the memory okay this is the nvram and okay and these are the details it's only showing you few things in this switch and also it can show you that the uptime of this switch and last reload reason as well so it can show you those so this switch not show you more details so if let me go to this type of switch and let's see in this one what uh, what they can show you so show version and if i type show version so let's see so show version is very important command it can show you a lot of detail about the ram rom and all those details so show version and here is let's see now yeah this one can show you more detail so this is our random access memory combine these two and this is our nvram 256 and this is our flash memory we have this flash memory so you can find those detail and also what uh, the uptime and also the reason and also the version of the operating system and which type of operating system we have so ios you can find those detail easily which i mentioned here system image version system uptime uh, image location flash and also cause up restart and also ram i told you this one combine these two interfaces type nvram and flash memory i show you all of these so uh, this was introduction to switch what is switch and how it is work and different type of switches